In a previous video I made an experiment with an inductive proximity switch and what I used for that was an NPN uh, normally open uh, that was actually this one but uh, a friend of mine he made me aware that there's actually quite a few other versions uh, so I knew that there was uh, the PNP analog so you have it over here that's the PNP normally open but you actually can also get an NPN normally closed and a PNP normally closed. So you have all four. They look very much the same here. The only difference is uh, yeah, different caps, uh, but I guess that's even a coincidence. They have the LED at the end, all four, and they all come out with three wires, uh, the brown, the black, and the blue, and they all use used for the same. So the brown is plus and the blue is minus and the black is the signal out. So my purpose with this video is to make a few experiments to find out the difference between the different uh, types of uh, proximity switches here. So NPN uh, also sometimes you will see them uh, noted as a sinking uh, and essentially what they do is upon uh, triggering they will provide a connection to ground and the same goes uh, or the opposite the mirror image for PNP they are called sourcing so when they are triggered they provide a connection to PLOS so let's see how that works out in practice so as a start I have connected the one from the previous video which is the NPN normally open and uh, you can see that uh, in this situation you actually get the full uh, supply I have put 24 volts uh, in and you are getting 24 volts out uh, of the uh, switch which is consistent with the fact that the NPN type is supposed to provide connection to ground when activated so right now you do not have connection to ground that means you have connection to plus and you get 24 out if I activate it you will see that the lid hopefully you can see that on the video the LED goes on and the power or the voltage goes down to zero so whenever you want to connect a load uh, a load to such a switch you connect it between the um, the out the black one and then to plus so that's the way to connect uh, this one if you look inside uh, you can envision it as a switch that goes up and down between uh, the different uh, wires you have the brown being plus the black being the out and the blue being the minus and in the uh, in the state that it is right now you have the 24 volts coming out of the black so you can envision that you have a connection from brown coming out of black then we activated the switch goes down and you get zero which is the same as you have a connection to ground so that's how this one is working uh, so I put up a little table here uh, so in the uh, inactive state you are getting the uh, supply out and the LED is off and in the active state you're getting ground out and the LED goes on so this is that one I'll just rig up uh, the mirror image uh, on the NPN side so you can see how that goes. Yeah, here we go. And it's pretty obvious that we have the mirror image between what we saw up here. First of all, uh, the output is not uh, 24, it's 0. And you see the LED is on. So for the NPN, normally closed. The internal diagram is that you have a connection uh, in the inactive state between the black and the blue which provides you ground on the output and as soon as we activate it you will get the 24 volts out and the LED goes out. So basically the little table here is a mirror down here so inactive you get ground out in the inactive state the LED is on in the active state you get 24 or the power supply output out and the LED goes off so what happens over here of course it's basically just a mirror image uh, again 
and I'll rig up one of them. Yeah, so now I have connected the PNP uh, normally open. Uh, and uh, in this case, you can see that you are getting zero out uh, when it's not active. If you activate it, the LED goes on and you get the power supply out. So it's totally an ir ir mirror image of what you have seen with the uh, NPN normally open. And the diagram is also uh, like a Im mirror image again. Uh, in the inactive state, you have a connection between the blue and the blacks, which is why you get ground out now and activate it, then you will get the power supply out. If you want to connect a PNP, then you take the out and then the load and then connect to ground. So power will flow from out, which becomes plus, and then to ground, which then will give you the current you need. And then of course the last one, I think we can skip connecting that one. Uh, is again a mirror image of this one and this one. So in the uh, PNP normally closed situation, what you would see in the inactive state, if I connected it, is that you got 24 volts out and the LED would be on. And in the active state, when you activate it, you will get ground out and the LED will go off. In the previous video, I also discussed briefly how to uh, connect a pull-down resistor in order to uh, go down to a meaningful input voltage for a breakout board. If you, for example, like we have tried here, uh, use uh, 24 volts, you are getting 24 volts into the breakout board. Most breakout boards are actually designed uh, with an optocoupler that typically uh, likes between 5 and 10 volts uh, and if you go into other digital inputs it's typically 5 volts. So you need these uh, pull down resistors. And uh, in that video I think we uh, ended up uh, with a list of uh, pull down resistors. We put the pull down resistor between uh, the output the black and the ground. So we simply pull down some of the voltage down into ground and uh, for the three voltages uh, 12, 24 and 36 we found 10 kilo, 3.3 kilo ohm and 2.2 kilo ohm. Um, if you go further up in voltage please remember that this is the maximum uh, for, for both PNP and NPN uh, switches that you normally get. So 2.2 kilo ohms gives a sufficient current, it's not anything that gets hot or anything. For the PNP uh, I will be doing it slightly different, uh, so I will connect uh, two resistors uh, in series on the black. So uh, you have resistor 1 and then in the middle you go to the breakout board and then resistor the second one goes to ground. And um, I have been calculating a little and doing some experimentation and found that uh, 5 milliampere uh, is a uh, sufficient uh, current to give a good result. Uh, so uh, in order to run uh, 5 milliampere um, in uh, 24 volts, uh, then you just take the 24 and divide it by 0 0.00. .00 Five, so two zeros after the point and, and that gives you 4.8 kilo ohms in total so the sum of these two needs to be 4.8 and in order to get around 5 volts out here approximately they have to be uh, split in f fifth so this is one fifth and this is the rest so divided by uh, 5 so approximately 1 kilo ohm here uh, and um, and the rest of there uh, will be sufficient. And that's actually what I have put here. I have put uh, this resistor one as one k, one kilo, ohm, and the other is uh, three point nine kilo ohm. And you can see uh, right now we are getting zero out. Uh, and uh, if I get this one here, you get around five volts out. So it actually works fine. So going up. Uh, to 36 and down to 12 uh, volts you will need to change the resistor uh, and I've done a little experimentation here we have uh, now we are at 12 volts approximately 
uh, and I have uh, kept the 1K but uh, reduced the second resistor, this one, to 1.9 kilo ohm, which gives you uh, more or less 5 volts. And uh, if I did the same at 36, I would go up to 5.8K uh, there, and then uh, that would also work. So these numbers here seems to be working for splitting the uh, the, uh, the voltage, so you get approximately five volts out here whenever you trigger the PNP.